Good afternoon. I'm Israeli government spokesperson Ilana Stein. This is day 115th of the October 7th war. Since last update, one soldier has fallen in action. Sergeant Major Reserves Eliran Yeger is remembered as a dedicated father by his wife and two children. His wife said in her eulogy, you were so happy when Ethan was born. You loved being Ethan's dad. You will be missed so much by him. Who is going to play basketball with him? Who is going to make him pancakes on Saturday morning? Who is going to explain to him how planes fly? Gilly, our daughter, who just recently learned to say dad, and you won't be able to see her grow and become an amazing person. The people of Israel thank Eliran for his service and will never forget him. We comfort his family and friends in their time of grief. Major Yeager's death brings the idea of death toll since October 7th to 557. The entire nation continues to cry, bring them all home now. The fate of the 136 hostages becomes more and more concerning with every minute that passes. There are young children and elderly grandparents suffering in the terror tunnels. There are sick people whom we still do not know if they have received the medicines that they require. There are women being held by sadistic rapist terrorists. And there are babies, Kfir and Ariel Bivas, one and four year old. The trauma they have experienced for the past 115 days is unconscionable. Every heart in this country breaks for them and yearns, yearns for their safe and immediate return. We are doing everything in our power to rescue them from the Hamas terrorists as soon as possible. Yesterday, talks concluded at the intelligence summit in Europe attended by Israeli, U.S., Qatari, and Egyptian officials. The meeting was defined as constructive. However, there are still significant gaps in the side, and the sides will continue to discuss at additional meetings to be held this week. A terrorist carried out a ramming attack in Haifa, after which he attempted to attack IDF soldiers with an axe. The terrorist was neutralized. Shortly afterwards, a terrorist attempted to stab IDF soldiers guarding a military post near Tekoa. That terrorist was also neutralized. This week, it was brought to light that 12 UNRWA employees were involved in the October 7 massacre. 300 praised it, and there are reports that two Israeli hostages are being held by UNRWA employees in Gaza. There are more UNRWA workers who will be exposed following thorough investigations, we are sure. On Saturday, the Prime Minister repeated Israel's commitment to achieving all goals of war, eliminating Hamas, returning all of our hostages, and ensuring that Gaza never again constitutes a threat to Israel. For years, the State of Israel produced evidence of radical jihadist teachings in UNRWA schools. The State of Israel applauds the increasing numbers of nations who have suspended their UNRWA fundings, including the United States, Germany, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Australia, Italy, Finland, Austria, France, Japan, and others. It's about time that foreign aid dollars stop ending up lining the pockets of violent terrorists. The people of Gaza deserve better. I echo the sentiments of the Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant, who said that major changes need to take place so that the international efforts, funds, and humanitarian initiatives don't fuel Hamas terrorism and the murder of Israelis. Terrorism under the guise of humanitarian work is a disgrace to the UN and the principles it claims to represent. The UN Secretary General announced the initiation of an internal review of UNRWA's activities in the Gaza Strip. Kogut released exclusive footage of crowds of Gazans expressing anger over their plight, chanting, down with Hamas. Now an update regarding humanitarian aid entering Gaza. Koga reported that yesterday 88 trucks came in carrying 470 tons of food, 440 tons of water and 210 tons of medical supplies. Additionally, two tanks of fuels and four tanks of cooking gas were received. Israel has excess capacity to inspect aid trucks. To those calling for more aid to enter the Strip, the message is simple, send more. Inside Gaza, 12 bakeries are producing 2 million pita breads daily, and planning is taking place for the creation of more. 
Today, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., the IDF paused operations in Al Shabura neighborhood in Rafa to enable the movement of humanitarian aid. That's all the updates for today. I will take your questions. <clears throat> Joel Pollack from Breitbart News asks, does Israel intend to comply with the ICJ order? And if so, how will it deal with the issue of so-called statements inciting genocide? Israel abides international law because we're a democratic, democratic country and that is according to our um, liberal ethics. So we will continue to do so and the ICJ, the fact that they asked us to do so, aligns with what we've been doing so far, so that is okay by us. And the rest of the things that I, we're still learning and we will give the needed information in a few days, um, so that's uh, regarding the court in Hague. The next question comes from Hannah Julian of the Jewish Press. She asks, security heads from Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt and the Palestinian Authority met in Riyadh to discuss plans for the day after the war in Gaza. On the agenda was a proposal to form a new Palestinian government that would oversee Gaza. Do you have a comment? What we know for sure is that we, can, we must make sure that Gaza will not be a threat to Israelis. And that means that we need to make sure that they have all the powers to rule themselves, but none of the power to impose a threat and be able to murder Israelis. These are the things that we have to make sure that happens in the day after. So that is all the questions for today. We'll see you tomorrow in our next briefing. Thank you.